be found at all. Let us be found in thee.
and they said is worthy to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For thy pleasure. So what is God's pleasure? You are <laughs> his creation. He yes. takes pleasure yes. in what concerns his people. Yes. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He takes pleasure in our strengthening ourselves in him. He takes pleasure in healing. He takes pleasure in his praises. Glory. When the praises of God are risen in an atmosphere, the Lord takes his abode in that kind of an atmosphere. Amen. And so the Lord God has pleasured himself among his people. And he said, you shall take some sweet calamus and take some oil of myrrh and take some cinnamon and take some spikenard and he said, you're going to blend it together and you're going to add a hint of oil to it. And this shall be a holy anointing oil unto you throughout all generations. And upon man's flesh shall it not be put, nor shall it be put upon a stranger. For it is a holy oil unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He was anointing his priesthood. Glory to God. To do what? To stand inside of that holy place and minister in the realm of the anointing of God. Amen. And every time the body gets together, there's a blending of spices and fragrances of God. And the oil is sweet. And the smell is strong. And it absolutely perfumes away all the old identity. Esther laid six months in sweet-smelling oils and myrrh and six months in sweet-smelling spices. And after 12 months of living in that realm, she went before the king and was chosen by God to rule in that throne with him. Hallelujah. That's the reason you should know that a great deal of healings and miracles can happen just by you staying in an anointed environment and in an atmosphere. I have people come testify time and time again that they don't even know when the healing happened. They just know they stayed in the presence of the Lord and all of a sudden the report changed. The, the, this uh, Brother Calvin dropped so many medicine bottles. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. He, they about took him off of everything. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. Just staying in that atmosphere and in that environment. Hallelujah. And every time he went back, they'd drop another one and drop another one. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about aspirins and Tylenol. I'm talking about heart pills and blood pressure pills. Glory to God. But God is the healer. Yes, amen. And he's also faithful to his word. He's magnified His Word above His name tonight. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. We bless you for being here in this service tonight. I want to thank the Lord for all the services Sunday. All the folk that came in and got blessed of God. I tell you what, I thank Him for that blowout we had Sunday morning. My God. And I still am just, just basking in the glory and all the prophecies that came forth. Amen. Would you stretch your hands towards that back room? Ask the Lord to bless the youth tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand on all of those youth that are gathered tonight. Bless them, Lord, as they worship you. Bless them and honor them for coming every week to the house of the Lord. Uh, anoint my wife to lead them and to teach them. And bless her, Lord Jesus, with a touch of God tonight. And let it be fresh upon her. And let them leave here excited when they go home. And bring them back again time and time again. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you'd be so kind to get an offering ready and bring it to the Lord, we bless you as you do so. In Jesus' name.
Jenny in here tonight. She's got something to say to us. You good tonight? All right. Praise the Lord. Let me walk Sue down the aisle. Now, by faith, we'll believe, we'll believe up a husband in here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. These single ladies take a lot of teasing around here. Amen. But I wish they'd let me approve whoever they're married because they may not like all this noise we got around here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you can't help but get excited when you get in the Word of God. And when God's blessings start coming on your life, brother, the joy comes. Amen. And the, and the rejoicing comes. And every time the king moves among his people, there's a shout of a king yes. among them. Hallelujah. We'd invite you tonight to open your Bibles, please, to the 45th Psalm. The 45th Psalm. Hallelujah. I had a good prayer time there, and then I got in ready to get into the Word to pick my Bible up. And I hadn't even opened it to, to begin to read it. And the Spirit spoke to me and said, Pray, go to the 45th Psalm. And I went there and, oh, I got lost in it. And I don't even know if I'll get past the first verse tonight. Uh, but that's all right. The Lord will say what He wants to say. And I want to get all of it in in the reading, though. It's not very long. Uh, I think 17 verses. Some of them very short. And I'm going to read this. And it reads, My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of things which I have made touching the king. Hallelujah. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. <laughs> How many know the Lord had something about him that was as heavenly as it was earthly? And he was fairer than the rest of the children of men. How many know he's called his church fair? She's fairer. Hallelujah. And he said, that grace is poured into thy lips, and therefore God hath blessed thee forever, and in uh, or gird thy sword upon thy thigh. How I many know Revelation said it was written on his thigh? His name is called the what? Word of God. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of the living God. He said, Get that word on your thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty, and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things, which means great and mighty things. And he said, Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. How many know what your enemy is tonight? Your enemy is doubt and fear and unbelief and, and a carnal mind that is enmity against God. Hallelujah. But the Lord told us through Paul in Ephesians 6, we'd be able to quench all the fiery darts, amen, of the devil. He said, the heirs are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies whereby the people fall under thee. Now this scripture in verse 6 and 7 is quoted uh, in Hebrews 1 and 8, but we'll read it here in this original time it's mentioned. Thy throne, O God, is forever and forever. Hallelujah. And a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness, uh, hated wickedness. Hebrew says hated iniquity. Therefore the Lord, hallelujah, God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Hallelujah. All thy garments smell of myrrh. Listen to me. You can't get around this annoying without it starts to get in you and get on you. If you expose yourself to the Holy Ghost long enough, there will be a manifestation of the glory of God in your life. Hallelujah. You're not going to sit in an environment that is sown with the power of God and is demonstrated in His moves, manifestations, and gifts without something that the Lord God starts showing up in your life and the supernatural starts to work Amen. in your behalf. 
I can tell you now, there are people who say, well, I'm not seeing the supernatural. I'm not feeling God like I are too. Well, one of two things. One, you're not in the right environment. Or two, when you get in there, you won't receive. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all it can be. Because if anybody opens their soul to heaven and exposes their life to the Holy Ghost, oh, glory to God. I want you to know He'll come in you with a baptism of fire and He'll burn up. He'll melt away the dross. And the glory will start showing forth. Amen. He said they smell like garments smell of myrrh. They all smell acacia. Come on now, these, and by the way, you know what these are? They're resurrection scents. They're healing medicines. How many of you want your life to start smelling like healing? Start smelling resurrection? Well, glory. Man went to anoint Jesus to preserve him. Well, hallelujah. He had done been anointed for his burial ahead of time. He wasn't anointed after he's dead. He was anointed while he was alive. And they said, Ought not this to have been given, sold and given to the poor? He said, Hold your peace against the day of my burial. She defied the law. The law said, wait and go, uh, go anoint him afterward. But that ain't what she done. She anointed him while he was alive. And the day, and that evening when he got in the garden, he sweat so deep that even the capillaries in his body, his human body began to bleed out. Don't you know, glory to God, that you could smell the aroma of that myrrh and that frankincense in that garden that was supposed to be a place of death. Glory to God. And yet there was the testimony of resurrection life among him. And now he's prophesying, said the Lord, anoint you above all your fellows. How did he anoint him above all his fellows? Because he was anointed to go through death and have a resurrection. Glory to God. He smelled like uh, aloe and he smelled like myrrh and he smelled like Tasia. And the next verse said that he came out of the ivory palace. And I've got news for you. He's in the ivory palaces tonight. Well, glory. I'm looking at some ivory palaces. Hallelujah. And the Lord is in His temple. And because He's in His temple, all flesh has got to be still. And that ain't all. He's going to raise up out of His holy temple in signs and in wonders. Glory to God. All right. Verse 9 says that now we're going to get into talking about the bride. We just heard about the king. Now we're going to hear about the bride. said the king's daughters were among the honorable women. Upon thy right hand they did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hallelujah. I don't have to tell you a queen is a what? A bride. Well, hearken, O daughter, and consider and climb thine ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. Well, glory. What did he mean by that? He means you live in a new house now. You walk in a new anointing now. You're not like all the rest of your fellows. You come into this anointing that is above and beyond. Hallelujah. And he said the king's... Uh, well, we'll go on. I'm going to skip that verse, but I want to get something out of one of them. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord. Worship thou him, and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. Brother, this church is coming into a day when even the wicked is going to court us with that wealth. Then the wealth of the wicked is laid up. Come on now. For the righteous for the just. And there's coming a time when the Lord's house needs something done and bless God, even the wicked's going to come in. Yes. Well, I said even the wicked's going to come in. And he said, the king's daughter is all glorious within. And her clothing is of wrought gold. You know what that means? That means divine nature. Well, praise the Lord. Praise she shall be brought to the king in raiments of needlework. 
the virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Now we're going to talk about you, not just the king, not just the bride. Now we're going to talk about the church. Because the church is the virgins, the hidden ones. Come on, somebody. The daughters of Jerusalem. And he said, With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. Well, glory. The first fruits are going in first. That's the bride. But make no mistake about it. The rest will follow. Hear me, church. The rest will follow. They've got to be a remnant overcome before the whole body comes in to the manifestation of it. And he said, With gladness, verse 15, and rejoicing, shall they be brought and enter the king's palace, and instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. Now that's the same as saying he's made us kings and priests unto our God, and we shall rule and reign with him Amen. on this earth. And he said, I'll make your name to be remembered through all generations. Glory to God. Therefore the people shall praise thee forever and forever. Can you say amen to that word tonight? Hallelujah. That's lengthy read more than what I ever do. But I wanted you to hear it all because I don't think I can preach it all. But I can tell you this. That there's something very carefully I want you to observe. I don't know if your Bible titles your songs or not. But uh, some of your Bibles will title it the Song of the Bride. And some of, I want you to see there that, that he says to the chief musician, do you see that word there, Shoshan? That word means this is a song of the lilies. This is to be sung among the lilies. And it's also called an excellent song. And it's also said to be sung to the more excellent way because it's for written for the sons of Korah. Hallelujah to say. And the sons of Korah was a hand-picked people by David who were skilled in anointing of worship. Glory to God. And Aaron's priesthood was a solemn priesthood that only observed rules and laws and regulations. But when David built a tabernacle on top of Zion, he instituted the worship of the Spirit, and he appointed the sons of Asaph, and he appointed the Levites. But then when it got time for that, that special son singing, that, that anointing, that high anointing, he appointed the sons of Korah. Korah the songs. Oh, that the sons of Korah sang. My God, they were of a higher order and of a higher dimension. And this song was written for the sons of Korah. This is divine poetry. This is Holy Ghost inspired. This is not something that just came off the, the, the ladies' press rap. This is that which is written for an excellent people. Amen. It takes an excellent spirit to discern what the Lord is doing in this work. Hallelujah. And the psalmist said it's for the bride. It's a love song. Hallelujah. It's a worship song. It's a, it's a deep song. It's to be sung for the bride. Hallelujah. Songs of Solomon is such a song. Solomon wrote a thousand and three songs and of all of them that one had the utmost uh, was the most excellent uh, oh glory to God all the other old translations of the Bible don't even call it the song of Solomon they call it the song of songs hallelujah it was above all the rest of them because it sings about the bride and it sings about the king and it sings about their oneness and it sings about them coming together in an agape love relationship where the bride is imparted seed by her husband and there she goes behind the veil with him and he speaks intimately to her heart amen to God and he ravishes her with my love my sister my spouse hallelujah he said even one of your eyes is enough but both of them together ravish my heart hallelujah oh glory to God God. Hallelujah. I mean, you could run a revival off just the title of it. Yes, amen. Always in the Bible, Lily refers to bride. Uh, brides in that day wrapped themselves in lilies. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Everywhere in the ceremony, they could get one, they put one. It also means trumpet. Hallelujah. Glory. My, my, my. Trumpet. Trumpet in the Bible typifies that prophetic voice. That uttered sound that pierces. My God. And sounds calling, a, calling an assembly. Hastening the word of the Lord. Amen. But but mostly just think in the terms that, that he said, my, my bride is a lily among the thorns. And that means that we was cursed with a curse. And he, the bridegroom, glory, reached through the thorns and redeemed us from the curse of the law of sin and death. And he tore his hand, reaching for his bride. But his torn hands, his tore foot, and his tore open side caused Thomas to cry, My Lord and my God. And you say, Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He wasn't doing nothing but making a way for his bride to get back into that place in him. Oh, Adam, he was opened up, but the Lord closed him back up. And she couldn't get back into where she got out of. But Jesus in his glorified body said, Thomas, thrust your head deep into my side. Hallelujah. He made a way for that bride to get back in. Amen. And so the way, the only way the Holy Ghost can say it is, is that his heart is indicting. And and indict means it's gushing, it's bubbling, it's boiling. Uh, hallelujah. It's kind of like Jeremiah's fire shut up in his bones. In other words, something's boiling over. I tried to keep it quiet, but a heart is a wellspring, you know. It's an artesian flow. Hallelujah. It flows and springs up into everlasting life. It means to boil, to run over, to bubble up. And he said, my heart's indicted. A good matter. Good, good, good matter. Good means well, beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, gracious, joyful, loving, merry, present, precious, pleasure, well favored. Are you hearing me? There was no sadness in this at all. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, if joy makes tears run out of your eyes, I want you to weep rivers. But if you're ever weeping because of sadness when it comes to the Lord, or because of, you know, feeling beat down, I want you to know that that is not God's best for you. God's best for you is good matters. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift. And it's not just good in the sense we throw that word good around good steak, good biscuits, good peas, good movie, good show, good service. We don't even know what we're talking about. It's so cliche. But I want you to know that the goodness of God is just a door handle that opens up a whole world of revelation in your life of things such as beauty and glory and power and majesty. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. And the psalmist said, what I'm getting ready to speak of is a good, and you know what he said? Matter. A good matter. The word matter means a word or a report. If you study it out all the way, you'll find that that word is used to describe divine communications. It is said to be what happened when prophets of old received revelation. Glory to God. From the Lord. Amen. In fact, the, the New Testament quotes about Old Testament prophets and said, holy men of old spake as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, when David said there's a matter getting ready to come up out of my heart, he was saying I'm boiling over. Revelation is working in me. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me. I've held it back, but now I've got to loose this word that God has spoken unto me. Elihu's told Job and then, and then Job about the 35 through 38, somewhere in there, Elihu said I just can't stand it no more. I'm like a bottle of wine that needs to be big. And I'm about to bubble over. I'm about to explode. Oh, hallelujah. There is a ministry going to raise up in this hour and explode with a good matter. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not going to preach death. Not going to preach sorrow. 
Not going to preach condemnation. Not going to preach hatred. Not going to preach religion. Not going to preach denomination. Literally. They're going to begin to indict. Oh, all of my high. Ball up. Swell up. And explode with a good matter. A good, a beautiful, a mighty, a majestic revelation of divine communications to the people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, it's divine communication. You know, incidentally, I just was going to bring this out. When it says the Word was made flesh, Logos yes. means divine expression. Right. In other words, the Word demands expression. Yes. Always it demands expression. Yes. And when Jesus, the Word, began to express the Word, then all these matters started happening all over the place. In Luke 4, for instance, the minute he got up and said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. There was one who went to that, that synagogue who had been tormented for years and nobody could handle it. And Jesus spoke one word. And instantly he was delivered. And they said, Well, what manner of man is this? What a word of power is this? And the Bible says they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. Now, do you or do you not understand that for a word to have power, it has to be more than ink and paper? Amen. There has to be divine inspiration. There has to be others. Do you realize that most good books you've ever read that really taught you something in God were probably preached before they were ever written down? They were probably spoken before they were ever printed. Now, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you before I get too deep in this. I'm going to quote them. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. I want to read you another one. John writing to, to, to some people he was wanting to come to, long to come and visit. He said in 2 John 1.12, Having many things to write unto you, but I would not write with paper and ink. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I do got a word in me, but it's not going to do it justice for me to write it down with ink. I long to come unto you that I may impart it unto you face to face. Hallelujah to God. Glory to His name. And so, oh, holy men of old spake as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Uh, not as they uh, train themselves or not as they just memorize something, but they caught up and they trusted God and they were full of the Word, but the Word became an inspiration and a rhema of God came out of them. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand that? You have never heard the preaching of the Word until you've heard the inspired Word of God. Hallelujah. All Scripture is given by what? Divine inspiration. Everybody say divine inspiration. Before that ever became paper in your Bible, it was divinely inspired in the Holy Ghost and was uttered forth. So you can get up with the paper and you can get up and read and you can get up and repeat and nothing may not happen. But if you'll speak as you are moved upon, yes. come on now, yes, yes. by the Holy Ghost. Yes. All right, he said the next, which brings us to the next line, my tongue is the what? Pen of a ready writer. Now I want, I, this is my thing, I want to say it like I feel it. Does anybody feel that way about what God's showing you? I want to be able to articulate with the same depth and the same thrust and the same power in which I feel it and see it inside of my spirit. Because if you have ever flowed by revelation, one of the uh, liabilities of living in this human flesh is being able to communicate spiritual truth. Hallelujah. Through an earthen vessel with the same amount of power and force 
in which you heard it in your spirit. And for these things Mary pondered them in her heart because she was waiting on a time when they would come forth. Now I want to show you there were two people at the birth of Jesus who were waiting on the inspiration, waiting on the utterance. One was Simeon, one was Anna. Both of them knew that it would come. And so they awaited it. They were awaiting what they called the consolation of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All that meant was they was waiting on the new covenant to show up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that somebody from the old covenant could reach out from the old covenant and embrace the new covenant. Yeah. Are you listening? And Simeon, the Bible said the Lord had promised him he would not see death until he seen the Lord's Christ. You know what that was saying? The, the manifestation of the anointing of God. Christ means the anointing. The anointed one. The anointing with its gifts. The anointing with its power. And of course the anointing with its person. There is a person of the anointing. That person of the anointing is that Jesus the Christ in you which is the hope of glory. Amen. And so Simeon would not die, could not die. I don't care how old he got. I don't care how it defied time. I don't care how it defied nature. He was sustained by an utterance that was on the inside of him awaiting to come forth. Oh, hallelujah. It's the same thing as Paul said. I can't die. I must preach it wrong. That, that uh, Agabus' daughter's got his belt and tore it in and began to prophesy and said, Thus saith the Lord God, the man that wears this girdle shall go bound to wrong. And he said, I'm not willing not only to be bound, I'll die if I have to. I must preach in wrong. He had a, he had a, he had a rider on the inside of him. God was offering a, a message in him. Amen. And so the Bible says that when Simeon came into the temple, when they brought Jesus to be circumcised in name, he didn't come just because he got up and wanted to take a walk. It says he came by the Spirit. He came by the Spirit, grabbed up that baby and said, Now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace, for now my eyes have seen the Lord's salvation. Hello! And then there was dwelling one named Anna who had been a widow and she spent her rest of her life in the temple praying and interceding before God. Come on now. Who also came and upon her coming began to prophesy and said this child is set for a falling and a rising. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he said, he said my tongue is a pen. I want to say it like I feel it. I believe that that has been a great deal of what turns people away from a message is because of the delivery of such. Now don't get me wrong. I don't believe in replacing the Holy Ghost with nothing. But the Holy Ghost knows how to talk and He knows how to say it and He knows how to get it across. And you need Him to do that because you generally going to have people in a meeting that's there to hear what they want to hear anyway. Hello. And they'll go away and say, you said something and you did not say that. But they were in a spirit in their mind to hear what they wanted to hear. So I want to say it with the force that I feel it. Listen to these verses. Proverbs 16, 23. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Listen to Job 33, verse 3. My words shall be the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many believe God will let us utter something clearly? And then, you know, just as, as, a, as a skillful, uh, because that's really some of your translation when you read my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. It reads my tongue is a pen of a skillful writer. And just like a skillful scribe picks up his pen <coughs> and just starts writing, so the Holy Ghost will begin to boil over 
in us. It will gush forth. My God. And when it does, the Word of the Lord will come springing up out of our mouth. My God. Hallelujah. A ready rider. I've done some studying on this word ready. It means quick, prompt, skilled, diligent, hasty, to hasten. In other words, you won't have to go sit down and think about it for 30 minutes. It's something that's ready. It's something. That's what it means when it says ready rider. It's my quills on the paper. I'm ready to go. I've got the inspiration. I'm ready. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, if you ever were in Brother Hall's service, you were ready because he'd throw the microphone at you. Hallelujah. And some of his preachers were just as bad. Yeah. Not necessarily bad, but it was good. But I'm saying you better be in the Spirit. Because they wanted you to say something. And if Brother Hall was up and you didn't say something, he'd take it away from you while you was talking. Yeah. And find somebody who had the anointing in their mouth. And that's the reason I'm not opposed to open mic services, but I, 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 I'm I not totally against that, but I am, I, I'm, I'm all against it being without order or somebody to keep order because sometimes it ain't the pen of a ready rider. Right. It's the pen of a dead rider. Yeah. And somebody just wants to carry on. Yeah. And they get up and take the whole service away and people drove to be fed by God and they have to sit there and be bored to tears wishing that person, he or she, would shut up all night. Yeah. Has anybody ever endured one of those services? Yeah, and you say, man, that's the reason we don't hold testimony service. Because uh, uh, we believe it's that God's answered prayer. Somebody on their own, and when they feel the inspiration of the Holy Ghost can rise, and when they rise, they'll give glory to God and not the devil. They'll give glory to the miraculous and not the doctor's report. And they won't be anointed to tell their whole life history when they do it. Can you say amen? All right, let me move on. It's translated through the Word of God in these words. To act quickly, to bring forth quickly, immediately, impulsive, rapid, swift. God, I want all that. I want that kind of anointing. I don't want to have my Lord. I want my tongue to have an answer. I don't want to be left there looking like a dummy. I want the Lord to inspire me and anoint me. If anybody comes to me to talk about the Word and they've got questions, I don't want to look like I don't know what I'm talking about. I believe God is going to put people in the forefront and it's not going to feel like you're under the hands of a novice, but it's going to be anointed people who have the tongue of the learned. To speak a word of due season. It means, and this is my favorite one. It, when I got to studying this today, I got to reading. And, and the more I read down into the Hebrew of it, it said it means to flow out like liquid. Oh, that blessed me. I said that blessed me. That the word of God can flow out of my mouth like liquid. Holy, holy. The words compared to honey. The words can... Mm, says His Word is sweeter than the honeycomb. My God. Are you listening to me? And, and us, us Easterners, we don't know nothing about oil. We go to the store and buy motor oil and lamp oil, and that lamp oil is just as thin as water. That's the truth. It looks like gasoline. In the Western world, oil is so thick that you have to wait a little while for it to ooze out of the bottle. Whatever it touches, it sticks to. Yeah. It don't run off. It abides. It remains there. Can you say amen? Oh, hallelujah. It stays with you. Glory to God. Amen. To flow out freely. In Numbers 12, verse 8, this is what God said about Moses. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. He says, I will even speak apparently unto him and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Oh, hallelujah. I love that verse. This is the verse God used to answer Aaron and Miriam when they were so unhappy about Moses marrying an Ethiopian wife. Yeah. Remember that? And they began to speak out against him. And this is what they said. God is just as able to talk to us as he is to Moses. 
Well, I doubt that. Moses is in the tabernacle worshiping, and you two are out here gossiping about the preacher. Yes. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And you know what? God said, Mary and Aaron, get in the tent. And they got in the tent, and this is what God said. I commune with Moses mouth to mouth. Oh, hallelujah. I don't even have to go through his ear. I don't have to go through his head. I don't have to go through his flesh. All I've got to do is put my word in his tongue, and he yields to it. He speaks it out. He said, that's not all. When I talk to Moses, I talk openly. I don't talk in dark sayings or parables. I don't have to utter my speech undercover. I can talk to him as a man speaks to his friend. And then he said, not only that, but I've shown him the similitude of my own likeness. He has seen the I am. Oh, praise his wonderful name. And so God said, Miriam, you go sit outside the camp for seven days. And she cost Israel seven days journey while she took a walk with the lepers for seven days and nights. All because she talked bad about the preacher. Gossiped against the man of God and said that she was just as capable. The very fact that she was out there talking behind his back was proof that she was not just as capable. I want to say something here. I want to be pastoral for a moment. You can't go home and talk about the preacher that feeds you and then expect his prayer to heal you. Hello? I mean, I've had people just don't do nothing but talk about me, talk about me, talk about me, but I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and, 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 and sickness hits. There goes that phone. <laughs> I mean, ringing off the hook. Could you pray? Could you come? Yes, I can. But if you don't get a sweet spirit about me before I get there, you won't receive what I pray. Hello? And so, this is something else. In Deuteronomy 8 and Mark 4, uh, uh, Matthew 4, and you know this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What does the scripture say? Don't go ahead, don't say, who shall ascend into the heavens and bring him down again? Or who shall ascend into the heart of earth and bring him up again? But what saith the scripture? The word is, nigh be even in thy mouth, come on now, and in thy heart, that word of faith which we speak. Amen. So, we move into another part of this because this is just the way the Lord took me today. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 2 says, Let him kiss me. Now this is how the song started. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Let him put his mouth on my mouth. Let him breathe into me. Let him impart life unto me. The, the, the NLT translation says, Kiss me and kiss me again. The, the ISV translation says, let him kiss me over and over and over again. Ah, God, I want a connection. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. That kiss is better than what? Why? Yes. His love is intoxicated. Yes, uh, Song of Solomon 5, verse 16. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. <laughs> Song of Solomon 7 and 9. And the roof of thy mouth is like the best wine. What do we learn in John 2? He saves the best wine for the last days. Glory to God. And how many believe the Lord is going to kiss His church in this last day? He said His roof of His mouth is like the best wine. That Now listen to this. That goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of the dead to speak again. Glory to God. He call out my shanda. I'm going to pay a Methodist to get an amen in here and not causing the, the dead to live again. Lord, have mercy when you start talking with this kind of a word. Dead stuff comes alive again. Hallelujah to God. Dead men shall live again. Together with my dead body shall they rise. How many know his body raised up? Hey, Amen. And if that body raised, he's going to raise up this body that is in the earth today in resurrection power. Hold up, I suck up a heart. Woo, he causes the lips of the dead to speak again. Psalms of Solomon chapter 4, verse 3. Thy lips are like a 
spread of scarlet. <laughs> and thy speech is comely. Mm. So what does that say? This minister is going to speak. This tongue of the pen, that this this tongue being the pen of a ready writer, is going to have a redemption word in his mouth. Verse uh, chapter four of Psalm, the Psalm of verse eleven said, "Thy lips drop as the honeycomb, and honey and milk are under thy tongue." Amen. 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 Right. Well, glory. It's good to have two folks with you. You know what? Uh, you know what uh, it says in Isaiah 11. It lists the seven spirits of God: the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of power, spirit of the fear of the Lord, spirit of the Lord. When it's done, it starts talking about the Lord. It starts talking about Him being quick, understanding. Same and and and, and that same thing it says. He won't judge after what he sees. But he'll judge righteous judgment. And you know what it says? It says, butter and honey shall he eat. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Butter and honey shall he eat. The word is rich and the word is sweet. Amen. And so he says that honey and milk are under his tongue. Uh, chapter 5, verse 13. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, as sweet as flowers. His lips are like lilies that drip with sweet smelling myrrh. Amen. Now we understand something. When he took her out from her mother's house and brought her into his banqueting house and spread her his banner of love over her, and she was sitting at that table, and she said, while I sit here, there's a fragrance, there's a smell going forth. And she said, wait a minute, I'm getting sick of love. She didn't mean I'm tired of it. She means I'm getting drunk. I'm getting intoxicated. I'm getting woozy. Why are you so woozy? You haven't drank any wine. I know, but his love is better than wine. His kisses are stronger than that. Mm. He manifests a love to her that is stronger than death. A godly jealousy that is crueler than the grave. A love that is the most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench it, nor can the floods drown it. Somebody say praise the Lord. It was a love feast, a love banner, a love banquet. He loved her till she passed out. She passed out because she was overcome. She fell out. She was slain. She laid in the glory of His presence. And every time the daughters of Jerusalem came and tried to get her to run back out with them, He went over to the window and said, I charge you, O you daughters of Jerusalem, do not wake or stir my love until she please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, I, 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 I'll just tell you now, I want to end up. I want to boil up. I want to I want to gush forth when I speak of the king. And I want my tongue to be skilled and ready in the revelations of God. Isaiah 51 16 said, I've put my words in thy mouth and I've covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. When your mouth speaks with this ministry word, you are planting heaven in people's lives because the worlds are framed by the word of God. Can you say amen? If I could just for a moment, and I'm getting ready to close, but if I could just for a moment relate for, for just a few minutes about how when the Queen of Sheba showed up at Solomon's house in 2 Chronicles 9 and the Bible said she came from afar and she came with a great company and she came with camels that were loaded with spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And she communed with Solomon all that was in her heart. And by the gift of the word of wisdom operating through him, the king, he not only answered, uh, told her what was in her heart, he told her her questions before she could even ask them. He told her all that was in her heart. And the Bible says that there was nothing hid from Solomon that he told her not. Now do you understand how powerful a tongue, my Lord, 
that is yielded to the Holy Ghost. And he got her, the richest woman in all the land known, and the most powerful till she showed up at the king's house. And when she got to the king's house, the Bible said that it poured out of his mouth so that he told her her questions and her answers. And so after they had communed together, he brings her in and sets her down at his table. And you'd have to go on your own and read what one daily provision was for Solomon's table. Hallelujah. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, that means his mouth, when she had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, and then she saw the house that that wisdom built, and then she saw the meat that it put on his table. And then she saw how his servants sat. And then she saw how his ministers attended. And then she looked and saw how they ascended to the house of the Lord. Well, glory. And when they began to ascend to the house of the Lord, the queen fell out. She couldn't set up no more. There remained no spirit in her. Are you listening to me? And I'll read you very briefly what she said because it bears and just brings right where we need to be with this because she said to him that happy are thy men, happy are thy servants which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God which delighted in thee to set thee on his throne, to be king for the Lord thy God, because thy God loved Israel to establish them forever. But she says to him, I, it, as she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land of thine acts and thy wisdom, how be it I believe not their words until I came and mine eyes have seen it. And behold, the one half. Are you listening? Yes. Of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me. For thou exceedest the fame that I heard. Hallelujah. There was a half that had not been told, but a greater Solomon is here now, and through the people of God, this half is going to be released. This half will be told. Can you say praise the Lord? And then in uh, uh, John, uh, Revelation, with John in Revelation 10, he got ready to take his pen and write something. And the Lord said, no, no, this can't be written with a pen. This has got to be prophesied out of the mouth. Oh, I'm all wish I oh, hallelujah. What was it? It was what the seven thunders of him. And he got ready to do like he had done everything else and write it down. And the Lord said, no, don't you write this down. This can't be written down with ink. This is a word that can only be written with a tongue of a pen of a ready writer. I'm going to utter this thunder on everything they've got to say through people. Come on now. And the Lord took him even deeper into it. He said, go over there and get that book out of the right hand of that angel and put it in your mouth and eat it up and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey, but in my belly shall it be bitter. And I, John, went and took the book of that him who held it in his right hand and I ate it and it was under my mouth sweet as a honey and in my belly bitter. Come on now. And what did the Lord say? The Lord said, Oh John, thou must still prophesy unto many nations. Oh glory to God. <laughs> well, I went on to preach myself happy and I hallelujah. Oh, he said, you're going to prophesy to many more. You're coming off this place. Every other man is dead. Every other man died. But cheer up, fear nothing, John. I have put an everlasting word on the inside of you and you're not going to die like the rest of them. You will get off this island and you will prophesy. I wish somebody 
had enough tenacity that is sad tonight. I will not die on this island where I'm at. I will come off this island. I will come out of this place. I will come out of this trial. I'll come out of this sickness. I'll come out of this burden. And when I do, I'll have a word in my mouth. And I will prophesy. Amen. Glory. And finally the word tells us in Psalms 19, the heavens declares His glory. That's all it can declare it. Praise the Lord. The heavens declares His glory. And that's not all. Day unto day, they utter His speech. He said there's not a speech or a language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth. Their words <laughs> to the ends of the world. And in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> the Lord would say unto thee this night, Be thou sure there's much more to come. <laughs> yea, there's much more to be said and much more to be prophesied. <laughs> yea, this night shake thyself and stand thyself up uh, straight before me. Uh, for thou shalt be moved upon uh, by the Holy Ghost in the days to come. Uh, and yea, thou shalt shake off the pains uh, and the shackles of every island. Uh, and the burden shall come off of thy shoulder. And the yoke from off of thy neck uh, and thou shalt surely prophesy as the pen of a ready writer. It shall flow, it shall bubble, it shall gush forth out of thee. Yea, it shall be the word of the Lord uh, and it shall be like a hammer that will break the rock into pieces uh, and thou shalt clear the way for victory and yea, thou shalt open up a path uh, of joy and of praise uh, for I, the Lord, have set upon thee this night uh, a word of power and a word of strength uh, and thou shalt go forth and be led forth in joy and yea the trees of the field shall clap their hands at thy coming uh, for mountains will move uh, at thy presence uh, valleys shall be exalted at every crooked place well I make straight say it the Lord thy God hallelujah everybody stand up and praise the Lord as we're dismissed tonight hallelujah 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 Amen, amen, amen. That word of the Lord in John, when they dipped him in a ball and all and brought him out, he didn't even burn him because he had the word of the Lord in him. The Bible said Joseph was in the prison until the time came the word of the Lord tried him. They laid him in fetters. They fitted him with iron. Oh, hallelujah. But he said the next day the king sent and loosed him from the prison set him in the palace, made him prime minister of all the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you now, you got such a word in you. Ask the Lord to give you the tongue of a pen, of a ready writer. Get ready to prophesy your way out and through and over and into in Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah.